In today's session, we get to talk about relations and functions. Coming up. So what exactly is a function? Now, of course, a function by definition, if I may say, a function is simply a process that changes a set of input numbers into a set of output numbers. Now, functions are normally represented by equations such as these you're seeing on top of on your screen. We have right here, we have y is equal to 3x plus 4. This is a fun, an example of a function. Of course, this value of x is what we call the input, and this value of y is what we are calling the output. Now, this is just a straight line equation that we are calling a function. We can also represent functions in another way. This is what we call function notation. What we were calling y is equal to 3x plus 4 can be represented as f in brackets x is going to be equal to 3x plus 4. Now this f is probably, this is what we call function notation. Like this value of y is the same as value, is, is, is what is being represented as f of x. The f of x in literal terms in this case will mean that the function of x where the input I mean, the, the function f, where the input is x, is given by 3x plus 4. Now, this means that for every value of input we put here, we are going to produce a certain output. Looking at our function here, if I put the value of x here is 1, if I put the, my input there as 1, my value of output is going to be 7. How? Because if I put 1 here, it's going to be 1 times 3, which is going to be 3 plus 4, will giving us 7. So if I put 2 here in this value of x, 2 times 3 is 6, 6 plus 4. So my value of f of x, or my value of y, or call it my output, is going to be 10. If I put here a 3, 3 times 3 is 9, 9 plus 4 is 13. So my value here is 13. Likewise, if I put a 4 here, 4 times 3 is 12, 12 plus 4 is 16. So, my value of y or the f of x is 16. What I'm trying to show us here, here is that for every input we are putting in here, we are getting a specific or we are getting a certain amount of output. In this brief table we are looking at, you are seeing that we are having a group of input values and a group of output values. When these values of x are such that they are in a group, we collectively call them the domain of the function. And also, when these output values are grouped like they we call, we are seeing here, we call them the range. When in a group, the input number is called the domain of the function, while the output is called the range. Now, of course, unless it is, has been stated otherwise, the domain is simply all real numbers for which the equation produces outputs. It is always going to be assumed that for every function that we shall be dealing with or for every function that there exists, unless it is stated otherwise, the assumption here is that the domain is always comprised of real numbers and these real numbers are such that they should always give us an output. To illustrate this further, let's take a look at this function. We have the function f where x is the input is given by 2x minus 1 and all this term is under the square root. We are saying that unless it is specified, the input value or the domain is supposed to be all real numbers that are supposed to be giving us an output. If you look at this question, the value of x here it just cannot be all real numbers or it just can't be, it's going to be specified. Why? 2x minus 1, if we are to sub, if we are to put a value of x here in such a way that the answer we get here is going to give us a negative number, it will mean that the value of, the, the y value or the output value here will be undefined. Why? Because we, we do not have the square root of a negative number. The rule is that the domain of a function is all real numbers for which the equation produces outputs that are real numbers. But in this example, the domain is going to be set to be x is greater than or equal to a half, since this value here, 2x minus 1, cannot be negative. 
So that means that for this case, x is going to be greater than or equal to a half. So that when we put a half here, a half times 2 is going to be 1. 1 minus 0 is 0. So 0 is equal to 0. But if we put a figure here like that is less than a half, let's say, let's say we put here 0. It's going to be 2 times 0. 2 times 0 is going to be 0. 0 minus 1 is negative 1 right here in the brackets. Square root of negative 1 gives us uh, an output that is undefined. So it means that in this case that when it comes to the input values, the input values are set to be greater than or equal to a half. So that we make sure that what we are having in these brackets here is always a positive number. And also that simply also means that the output or call it the range is in this case the range is set to be all non-negative numbers. So for some functions, it can also just be predetermined. For example, in this function, we can simply say that the domain is set to be that x is greater than 5. We can choose on any set or any limitation for this function. So the general rule here is this, that unless the domain is explicitly stated, like in this case, the domain is assumed to be all real values that produce real numbers as outputs. Now we can represent functions in another way. For example, a function with a small finite domain can be described by a set of ordered pairs instead of an equation like this. What you're seeing right what you're seeing right there are what we are calling ordered pairs. And ordered pairs is just another way we can show functions. Now if you look at these ordered pairs, we see that uh, this and that this is the value of x, that is the value of y, x, y, x, y, x, y. And from these ordered pairs, these values that are in red, the values of x are the ones we are calling the domain, 0, 1, 2, 3. And then the ones that are in blue are the ones we are calling the values of y, which are represented here, 2, 1, 3, and 8. So the domain is that, and this is our range. So from these ordered pairs, you're seeing that every input is corresponding to a certain output. Every input is corresponding to a certain output. Or every value of x is corresponding to a certain value of y. Now, the, this is one thing about functions that you should know. That when it comes to functions, one value of x corresponds to one value of y. One value of x, if it is 1, this one, when it is fed in into a certain function, it's supposed to give us one a, a specific value of y. A specific value of x is supposed to be giving a specific value of y. But then there is sometimes when this thing is not respected. You'll find that, let's say this is 0. When you feed in 0, you find that you're getting 2. And maybe let's say you put in here 0 also, and you find that you're getting another value that is not 2. Let's take a look at this in this illustration. If you look at this illustration R, these, or these are ordered pairs. If you look at these ordered pairs R, you find that when we feed in 1 in the input, we are getting 3 as the output. Again, this very 1 is giving another output here of 4. So what does this mean? This means that this 1, the same input 1, is giving us two different outputs. Likewise, in these other two ordered pairs, you're seeing that we are having 2 here and 2 here. When the input is 2, the input 2 is giving us two different outputs, which is 9 and 4. So, because here the input, one input is giving us two different outputs, one input is giving us two different outputs, this distorts the uniqueness of a function. What do I mean by the, by the uniqueness of a function? The uniqueness of a function is such that one input is going to explicitly give us one output. If the input is one, it, it can only give us one output as far as these ordered pairs are concerned. But when you look at these ones, it is one input, one, but this one input is giving us two different outputs. So this ceases to be a function. These ordered pairs are not representing a function. These ordered pairs are representing what we call a relation. A relation, therefore, is simply a rule that connects two or more things. And a function is just a type of relation. Because remember, I, the function also is equally... Is, a function is simply a special kind of relation. 
So a function is more like a subset of the relation. The relation is just any equation that r relates two things or any rule or any expression that could be algebraic, it could be a quadratic equation, it could be a relation simply is a rule that connects two or more things. And just like a function, a relation tells us what to do with some sort of input so that we get a specific kind of output. The difference between a relation and um, a, a relation and, um, and 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 a relation and a function is that a function has this rule that one input gives us one specific output. Yet when it comes to a relation, one input can give us more than one output like we've seen here f of x is equal to y is the function notation and this simply means that the value of f it simply means that the function f where x is the input is giving us y now if you're to represent this ordered pairs in terms of this function notation you find that the function f where zero which is the value of x is the input is giving us two as the output right here the value the function f where x is the input is giving us 1 as the output. The function f where 2 is the input is giving us 3 as the output. And finally, where the function f is 3, right there, in this ordered pair, it's giving us 8, the value of y as the output. So this is how we can represent these ordered pairs as using the function notation. The first example is more of an objective. If 3, 2, 4, 2, 3, 1, 7, 1 and 2, 3 is to be a function, which of the following pairs must be removed? Now if you look at this ordered pair right here, the question is asking us that if this ordered pair is to be representing a function, it means that one of these ordered pairs must be removed. Now from this we already know, or from what I've been explaining earlier, that the uniqueness of a function is this that one in one input corresponds to one output specifically and if you look at the inputs here we have three four three seven two those that is more like the domain but from this domain we are able to see that the domain here the value of three here and the value of three here or the value when when three is the input it's giving us um Two outputs when the input here is 3 it's giving us 2 as the output when the input here is 3 it's giving us 1 as the output so it means that when the input is 3 it's giving us two different outputs which is 2 and 1 and if one input is giving us two different outputs that ceases to be a function this ordered pair therefore is representing what we call a relation now, in order for us to make this a function, it means that we have to get rid of one of these ordered pairs. We can either get rid of 3,2 or we get rid of 3,1. If we get rid of one of these, it means that all the remaining ordered pairs will simply represent uh, a function because every input is corresponding to one output. So, if you were to answer this question, if you look at these objectives, on which of these to eliminate, our answer is definitely going to be A. So in order for us to make this set of ordered pairs a function, we are simply going to remove 3, 2. And when we remove that, you realize that the rest of the ordered pairs is such that one input is giving one specific output. One input is giving one specific output, and that makes it a function. Looking on to our next one, we are being asked that what value must be excluded from the domain of x, y? Or from this domain x comma y where we have been given a function that y is given up as x plus 2 divided by x minus 2 now which of these should be excluded from the domain like which value of x must be excluded from this for this to hold we had stated earlier that unless the domain is explicitly stated the domain is always assumed to be all real values that produce real numbers as outputs now if you look at this expression there's not there's not been any rule that is stated that the domain is supposed to be running from this value to that value so it means that that rule applies here that the domain is going to be assumed to be all real values that produce real numbers and outputs 
So now it means that this value of y is supposed to be, the, the, the value of x that we are going to feed in here is supposed to be such that it produces a value of y that is a real number. But if you look at this expression, y is equal to x plus 2, divide that by x minus 2. If we put our value of x here, here, uh, let's say, if you look at our value of part A, negative 2. If we put negative 2 here, it's going to give us negative 4 in the denominator. So whatever we get here, if we divide by negative 4, we shall get a, a value of y that is a real number. So we, we, we can't get rid of negative 2. So in other words here, y would be, if, if x was negative 2, y would be negative 2 plus 2, giving us 0. Divide that by a negative 4, y would be 0. So let's go to b. If you look at b, if b is 0, if, if the value of x is 0, the value will be 0 plus 2, that's going to be 2. Divide that by negative 2, giving us the value of y as negative 1. So again, we, 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 we can't, b is not the answer. So meaning, um, if we look at, but c, c is, uh, if we put 2 plus 2 right here, it's going to give us 4 in the numerator. In the denominator, 2 minus 2 is going to give us 0. 2 divide that by 0 is going to give us a number that is not defined. We can't, as in 2 divide, any number divided by 0 gives us um, an undefined kind of number. So what does that mean? 2 divided by 0 gives us a value of y that is not a real number, a value of y that we do not understand. So probably maybe c would be, but let's go to d. d is 2. If, we, if it's 2 and negative 2, well, we already ruled out that if we make x the, uh, negative 2, it would still give us a value of y that is um, that is a real number. So in this case, uh, our answer for this number is c. Because if we make uh, the value of x2, it's going to give us 2 minus 2 down here. And uh, our value of y would be an undefined number. And we said that unless... The domain is explicitly stated uh, these values of x here are assumed to be all real numbers that are supposed to produce real numbers as outputs or that are supposed to give us a value of y that is a real number right now we are going to get into what we call combining functions start off with an illustration here we have functions and a function called f and a function called g with both of them having inputs as x now these functions f and g can be combined we can combine them by either adding them up we can combine them by subtraction we can combine them by multiplying them we can also combine them by dividing them so we'll start off with adding the functions this is the notation we shall first go through the notation the notation here of some of the function, we have a function f and a function g. We call it f of x or g of x. Both functions have the input as x. So if we are to add them, it will mean that it's going to be f plus g. These are the two functions we are adding and the input is both x. Adding this function is the same as saying f of x plus g of x. Or the function f where x is the input or the function g where x is the input. This is the notation. That is how we represent some of a function. Then we have what we call the difference of a function. Of course, the difference of a function here, we are subtracting the functions. The function f minus function g, where x is the input, this is one way of representing it. It's the same as saying the function f where x is the input minus the function g where x is the input. We can also combine functions by multiplying them and this in this case we are saying the product of a function the product of the function in this case is representing by that dot f dot g f dot g where x is the input variable is the same as saying f of x dot g of x in this case we are multiplying the functions then we have what we call the quotient of the function of course the quotient in this case is that we are dividing the functions where f divided by g where x is the input and when we divide those two where x is the input we have it's the same as saying f of x divide that by g of x but the condition here is that the function whatever function is in the denominator should not be equal to zero because if this function is equal to zero then it would mean that the quotient of the function would be undefined so the condition is that the con the 
uh, this is only valid when whatever function is in the denominator is not supposed to be equal to zero. Then we have what we call the composite function. A composite function is more like you place a function in a function. And it is represented by that round dot. It is more of a dot. It is just more of a small round circle. That the function f being a composite of a function g or f, a small round, small round circle g of x where x is the input is the same as saying f. And in the in f into where the input is another function. In, in simple terms, a composite function is more of a function of a function or it is a situation whereby you're having a function that is acting as an input in another function. So in this case you'll see that the function g of x in this case is acting as an input of the function f of x. So we're having a function being an input of another function. So of course this is the notation that f um, with the input g of x. Same with here we are having the function g and this function g is such that its input or its value of x or its input is another function f of x. So right here we are having a number. We have that if f of x is going to be equal to 3x minus 2, that is a function f where x is the input and that's the function and then we have function g where x still is the input is given given by x squared minus 4 write an expression for each of the following functions and one our value of a there is f plus g we're supposed to add them of course f plus g of x this is the same as saying f of x plus g of x so the function of x in this case here according to our question is 3x minus 2 so this is going to be 3x minus 2 plus our g of x our g of x is x squared minus 4 so we go ahead and add them and get our final expression so this is going to become 3x minus 2 plus x squared minus 4 so this is going to become um we we arrange the collect like terms look at x squared plus 3x uh, this is minus 2 and minus 4. Minus 2 and minus 4 gives us minus 6. We end up with a quadratic equation and that's the answer. In part B we are trying to find the difference of these functions. Of course f of g of x is the same as saying f of x minus g of x. Definitely this is going to end up being f of x in this case being 3x minus 2. Minus g of x, our g of x is x squared minus 4. This is going to end up being 3x minus 2. Then we open brackets, negative 1 times x squared is going to give us negative x squared. Then we have negative 1 times negative 4 gives us positive 4. That's going to become, of course, we collect like terms. This is going to become... Um, 3x that is minus x squared then we have negative 2 here and positive 4 negative 2 plus 4 is going to give us positive 2 so that gives us the answer or if I may rearrange this in the form of a quadratic equation it turns out to be x squared plus 3x plus 2 then we have here, we are multiplying the, the two. We have f dot g. This is the same as f times x. This is the same as f of x. Multiply that by g of x. So this is going to become f of x. In this case, f of x is 3x minus 2. Multiply that by g of x, which is x squared minus 4. So definitely these are two brackets multiplying each other. So we are going to go ahead and open the brackets. So this becomes 3x times all these brackets, which is going to be 3x times x squared minus 4 minus 2. Time, this is minus 2 times the whole bracket. Minus 2 into x squared minus 4. So opening brackets, 3x times x squared is going to give us 
3x to the power 3. 3x three times negative 4 is going to give us negative 12x. We have negative 2 times x squared giving us negative 2x squared. Then we have negative 2 times negative 4 giving us positive 8. We go ahead and uh, rearrange this to make it simpler. This becomes 3x cubed minus 2x squared minus 12x plus 8. And uh, we can't simplify it any further than that. That's our answer right there. Then we have f over g of x. f over g, of course, this is more of, we are finding the quotient of these two. This is the same as saying f of x. Divide that by g of x. Dividing these two, we have f of x giving us 3x minus 2. Divide that by g of x. g of x is x squared minus 4. And I think uh, with that's pretty much it. It's going to give us 3x minus 2 over um, x squared minus 4. You can simplify this further. x squared minus 4 is the same as x squared minus um, 2 squared. This is difference of 2 squares. And difference of 2 squares ends up giving us 3x minus 2 divided that by uh, this gives us x minus 2 into x plus 2. Difference of two squares, the property. So definitely uh, remember we said that when it comes to quotient, uh, the thing here is, the key thing here is that the denominator is not supposed to be equal to 0. This is how we illustrated it here. That f, the, when we are looking at the quotient function, it is supposed to be such that the denominator, the g of x, is not equal to 0. So since here it, the, the quotient function is such that it is 3x minus 2 over x minus 2 into x plus 2, the condition here is that if I make x um, 2 here, uh, if I make x 2, it's going to be 2 minus 2, this is going to be 0, and it will make this whole denominator 0. Likewise, if I make x this x here negative 2, it's going to make this whole thing negative 2 plus 2, giving it 0. So it's going to make the entire denominator 0, and this, this function, the quotient function, would be undefined. So the condition here, therefore, we shall write and say that the value of x in this case is not supposed to be equal to plus or minus 2. That's the condition for this quotient function to stand. So looking at the, so looking at the final, um, it's a composite function where we have the function f times a small circle g of x. This is the same as saying that we are looking for the function of x where our input value is another function g of x. So, what is our function of x, for example? Our f of x is, um, is 3x minus 2, right there. 3x minus 2. That's our function, f of x. Our function where x is the variable. And according to this composite function, if this is our function f, x, f, it is such that the input value is another function. So, it means that in this place of x, we are supposed to put there, the function g of x. So this is going to become 3 multiply that by in the place of x we are putting g of x which is this whole thing. So this is going to become x squared minus 4 that is what we are putting in the place of x minus 2. And so we go ahead and simplify that that is 3 times x squared is going to give us 3x squared then 3 times negative 4 is negative 12 minus 2. And we shall end up with 3x squared, negative 12 minus 2 is negative 14. That's pretty much it. Then we have g f. Then we have g f of x. This is the same as saying g, small round circle, where the input of is f of x. So what is our g of x? Our g of x, our g of x is x squared minus 4. Now, 
in our g of x, in the place of x, we are supposed to put another function called f of x. So in the place of x, we are putting a function. So that's going to become, in the place of x squared, our f of x is 3x minus 2. So we are going to put here 3x minus 2, that is squared, minus 4. And that's going to become, so we go ahead and expand this. This is definitely going to become uh, 9x squared minus minus 2 times 3 times 2 2 times 3 is 6 6 times 2 is 12 minus 12 x plus 4 then uh, the, 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 this is an expansion of this minus 4 and so we shall end up with 9 x squared minus 12 x So in this session, we are going to look at how to combine functions. We are going to look at a few worked examples relating to functions, how to combine them. So let's get started with number one. We have f of x being given, giving us as 3x squared minus 2x plus 4. They're telling us find f where the input is negative 2. In other words, they're trying us to find the value of the function or the value of y when x is negative 2. So we go ahead and substitute in there. It's going to be 3, the, the function is 3x minus 2x plus 4. So when x is negative 2, it means it's going to be 3 times negative 2 squared minus 2 times x minus 2 times negative 2 plus 4. This is going to become 3 times, negative 2 squared is 4. So it's 3 times 4 minus... Um, Okay, this is negative 2 times negative 2, which is positive 4, so we shall simply say plus 4, then plus 4. So 3 times 4 is 12, plus uh, 4, 4 plus 4 is 8. 12 plus 8, the answer is 20. So our answer is E. So if f of x is going to be equal to 4x minus 5, and g of x is 3 to the power x, then find f g of 2. So let, this is a composite function. Let's first find the function inside g of 2. So meaning that uh, g of 2 is giving us, first of all we have, we know g of x to be, to begin with, g of x is, going, is giving us 3 to the power x right there. So it means that g of 2, so when the value of x is 2, is going to be giving us 3 to the power x, in this case x is 2. So this is going to be 3 times 3 which is 9. So if the g, g of 2 is 9, it means that this function is going to become f of g of 2. Our g of 2 is 9, so it's f of 9. So what is the function when the value of x is 9? First of all, f of x is 4x minus 5, yeah? So it means that if f of x is going to be 4x minus 5, so f of 9, so in the place of x there is a 9, so it means that where there is x, we put 9, it's going to become 4 times 9, minus 5. That's going to become uh, 4. 4 times 9 is uh, 36. So it's going to become 36 minus 5. 36 minus 5 gives us 31. So the answer is D. And then we have this number. If f of uh, this composite function is given by 4x squared minus 8x and f of x is x squared minus 4, then what is g of x? So we have been given f of x. If you look at this question, this is f of x. This has been given. f of x is x squared minus 4. And according to this expression, f of x giving us x squared minus 4, the value in the, the function, the, the input for f, the input for f in this case was another function that we are calling g of x. So the question is that what is this function g of x? I may approach this in two ways. Let's look at the first way. So well, we can go ahead and get these answers, a, b, c, d, e, and try and plug them into here because these are possible functions of g of x, the g of x we are looking for. So we are going to plug in a right there, or b in there, then we plug in c in there, then we plug in d right there, or we plug in e right there and then we see that if we plug in this function g of x in the place of x in this expression 
do we get this expression? A number that gives us this expression when we plug this in here will be the answer. So let's get started. So let's begin with a. a is 4 minus x. We know that f of x is going to be x squared minus 4. So if 4 minus x is given right there, so this is going to become f of 4 minus x is going to give us 4 minus x minus 4. This is squared. So this is going to become, um, of course, this is the whole value of x. This is the input, actually, the input. So that, that's the input right there. So this is going to become, of course, 4 squared is um, 16 minus 8x plus x squared minus 4. And this is going to become x squared minus 8x then 16 minus 4 is 12, plus 12. Now this expression is not that, so it means that A is out. Of course, if we go to B, uh, part B, if we put X, uh, part B, put, plugging in X here is simply going to still give us, putting X there, it's going to simply give us X minus 4. So B is out of the picture. Let's try C, 2X minus 2. If we put 2x minus 2 in the brackets here as our input for this expression, is it going to give us that? So we try. It's going to be this becomes f of um, 2x minus 2 is giving us x squared. In this case, it's going to be 2x minus 2. This whole thing is squared minus 4. This is going to become expanding this is giving us 4x squared minus 8x plus 4 minus 4. Of course this is going to become 4x squared minus 8x. And if you look at this, this 4x squared minus 8 is consistent with this 4x squared minus 8. In this case the answer here is so the question again, if this is equal to that and this is equal to that, uh, the, the, this composite function, it means that the g of x is going to be 2x minus 2. In other words, if our function of f is such that the value of x here is the function and which function is 2x minus 2, if we plug in 2x minus 2 there, then our output is going to be that. So that was one way of doing this. Now, what if they gave us this very same number and what if they didn't give us these answers and we were supposed to just find it the way it is? How would we go about that? So this is another, this is an alternative way of looking at this. We have this composite function f into g of x is giving us 4x squared minus 8x and f of x is giving us x squared minus 4. So what is g of x? Now to begin with, this is a composite function. We are having the function g of x inside f. So we shall start with this. We have f of x is giving us x squared minus 4. That is the original function. But now what happens, let's substitute in the value of g of x in this expression. Because it is a function where the input is another function g where the input is also x. So in this case, this means that if we put f, the function f in brackets where the value of x, now the input has become g of x, this makes this function to become g of x, where there is x is where you put g of x. So it becomes g of x, this is squared minus 4. So um, what is the function where f of g of x is this expression f of g of x this composite function is given by 4x squared minus 8x so that is exactly what we go ahead and do we go substitute this here we say that 4x squared minus 8x is giving us this expression g into x all this is squared minus 4 so what we do here we go ahead and solve this and we make g of x the subject of the formula and we will be able to get our answer as required by the question. So this is going to give us 4x squared 
minus 8x this 4 comes this way becomes plus 4 is giving us g of x this thing is squared so we have a quadratic equation here in x so factorizing this becomes 4 outside the brackets into x squared minus 4x minus 2x plus 1 is giving us g of x and this whole thing is to the power 2 so this continues to be 4 into uh, factorizing this quadratic expression is going to give us x minus 1 squared is giving us g of x and this whole thing is squared so definitely to make this whole thing squared because we want to eliminate this square we do it this way this is going to become 2 into x minus 1 this whole thing becomes squared this becomes g of x this whole thing is also squared so definitely for us to get rid of this square sign we find the square root on both sides this square root sign cancels with that you remain yourself with uh, this becomes g of x remains with of course the square root sign cancels with that square we remain with 2 into x minus 1 and this means that g of x is equal to 2 into x minus 1 which is the same as 2x minus 2 and if you look into our answers 2x minus 2 is c that is the right answer so that's the second way of looking at this what values must be excluded from the domain of this quotient f over g if this is divided by that from this quotient whereby the f is the function f is that and the function g is given by that so we'll go ahead and prime fac and factorize this quadratic expression now i'm not going to go into the details of factorizing this, this expression uh the assumption is that you know how to factorize quadratic expressions using completing squares using factorization method and so on so uh, after factorizing this quadratic expression we end up with in our numerator we end up with uh, x minus 1 into 3x minus 1 divide that by 3x squared minus 2 continue with this we shall continue it from here that's going to become x minus 1 into 3x minus 1 divide that by the bottom the actual it's 3x minus 3 not 2 so this uh, common factor here is 3 is going to become 3 into x squared minus 1 this is the same as saying x minus 1 into 3x minus 1 divide all that by 3 multiply that by x squared minus 1 x squared minus 1 is the same as x squared minus 1 squared x squared minus 1 squared gives us a difference of two squares and how do we express difference of two squares the identity in this case is going to become um, 3 into x square x minus 1 into x plus 1 and definitely this is going to become x minus 1 into 3x minus 1 divide that by 3 into x minus 1 into x plus 1 so, the, so our quotient so our quotient function turns out to be like that it turns out to be x minus 1 in brackets into 3x minus 1 all that in brackets divide that by 3 into x minus 1 into x plus 1 now when you're dealing with quotient functions remember we said that the denominator is not supposed to be equal to 0 so looking at this 3 into x minus 1 and x plus 1 which number should we exclude from the values of x or which value should, must we exclude from the domain that could make this entire term to become zero now of course if you look at this expression x minus one means that if we make this value of x a positive one this will give us one minus one giving us a zero and it makes this whole term zero so meaning that x should not be one also if you look at this term if we make this value of if x was negative one it would mean that as far as this bracket is concerned negative one plus one would make this bracket zero Making this bracket zero would make this whole term equal to zero. And when and that would make the value of this quotient undefined. 
So to avoid that, to avoid this denominator being equal to zero, it means that x should not be equal to either positive or negative one. And so meaning that if we are to go back to our question, question is asking us to find the values which must be excluded from the domain of the quotient of the functions f and over g. If f of x was that and g of the of that, the answer is definitely d. x should not be positive or negative one. So meaning that our answer here is d. So we're having this question that looks related to like question number three, the one we had done just if a while back. It's telling us that if g of x is giving us 3x plus 2 and g of f into x is giving us x, then find f of 2. So we realize that this is a composite function where any value of x here that is put here is going to be equal to x. So meaning that if we have our value of x here as 1, this value, this thing is 1. If this is 2, the value of x here is 2. In the function f, it means that the overall is 2. If it is 3, it is 3 there and so on. So again, what we do, we shall start with our original expression. This is a composite function where uh, g is the one outside and we are having the function f inside the function g. The function g of x is given by 3x plus 2. So it is g into x is given by 3x plus 2. Now, when we put in the place of x that is inside the function, we put there f of x. So in the place of x, we are going to put this expression f of x. So g into the other function f of x, f of x is still going to give us 3. Now in the place of x, we put that function f of x. So it's going to be 3 into the brackets f of x like that plus 2. So this is going to become g. Now g of f of x, remember right here, it has given us the impression that um, g f of x is equivalent to x. So it means that g of f of x in this case is x. So we shall put x here is going to give us this expression. Of course, this expression is going to be 3 times f of x plus 2. So we go ahead and make f of x the subject of the formula because we want f of x first, then we shall put in the value of 2 later. So f of x, the expression is going to become x. Making this the subject of the formula means this is going to become x minus 2, divide that by 3, is going to give us f of x. So meaning that the function f where x is the input is giving us x minus 2, divide that by 3. But now the question requires us to find the value of f where the input is 2. So we shall do exactly that here. So meaning that f where the input is 2 is going to give us 2 minus 2 over 3, and this is going to give us 0. So from our objectives here, the answer is A. So in this question, they are telling us that if the function P where X is the input is given by 4X minus 6, and P where the input is A is equal to 0, then what is the value of A? Of course, the value of A here, here they are telling us that when in the place of X, when we put A in the place of X, the overall expression, the overall function is 0. So we'll begin by quoting the original expression p of x. p of x, or the function of p where x is the input variable, is given by 4x minus 6. So where x is a, meaning that when our function p is such that the value of x is a, given by 4 times value of x, where there is x is where we put a, so it's going to become 4a minus 6. Of course, where p, where a is, this p of a is equal to 0. So this thing is equal to 0. It's going to give us 4a minus 6. So go ahead and find the value of a. This is going to become 4a being equal to positive 6. When we divide both sides by 4, we shall end up with our value of a as 
3 over 2. So our value of A is 3 over 2 and that makes C the answer. In this session, we get to look at the inverse of a function. Now, speaking of an inverse of a function, it is another way of saying the reverse of a function, and it is denoted by that power negative 1. We know that functions can be labeled as f, g, h, or any letter. The inverse of a function is denoted by that power negative 1. For example, if the function is labeled g, the inverse of the function will be g to the power negative 1. If the function is labeled h, the inverse of that function will be h to the power negative 1. Now, of course, for a function to have an inverse, it's supposed to be satisfying a certain relation. And the property of this relation is such that that very function, and if that very function is made a composite of its inverse, it is supposed to be equal to this relation and all that is supposed to be equal to x so it means that if you're having two functions and one function is f of x and the other is the inverse or the inverse of that very function then for that to be true those two functions are supposed to satisfy this relation and from earlier on this simply means that these two are composite functions not multiplication to illustrate that further, we have this function here, f of x is going to be equal to 4x plus 2. The question is asking that if f of x is equal to 4x plus 2, then is the inverse of this same function given as x minus 2 over 4? We need to prove that this is true. Of course, for us to prove whether this function is indeed an inverse of that, we are going to use this relation. We are going to use this relation and see if we do this it's going to equal to x then we're going to work out this as well and see if it is equal to x and if this relation is fully satisfied then we can conclude and say that yes it's indeed true that this function is the inverse of the other so we get started with the working so f of x composites its inverse this is going to be give, this is interpreted as that the function where the input is the its inverse. So we know that f of x definitely is 4x plus 2. So this is going to be 4 times x. Now in the place of x, if this is f of x, if f of x is given as 4x plus 2. So it means that in the place of x, we are going to put the inverse. This is what we are representing here. That So where well, there is x, we are going to put the inverse. So in this case, we are going to put f times x minus 2. Divide that by 4 plus 2. Of course, from here, this 4 is going to cancel out with that 4. And we are going to remain with x minus 2 plus 2. And we shall end up with x. So that's the first bit. We have been trying to verify this part of the relation here. So we are going to go ahead and do the same thing, but the reverse way in this form. So we are going to do a reverse of this. So the composite function of those two, this is interpreted as the inverse where the input is going to be f of x. And this is going to be given by, of course, the inverse function in this case is x minus 2 over 4. So if f of x is x minus 2 over 4 as given here, so it means in the place of x we are putting there the function f of x in the place of x. So it means in this expression where there is x, we are going to put the function f of x for x plus 2. So meaning that in this part, it's going to become 4x minus 2. It's what we put here then minus 2. Divide all that by 4. So definitely this is going to become 4x minus 2 minus 2. Divide that by 4. This will become 4x minus 4 over 4. This will give us 4 into x minus 1 
divide that by 4. This is supposed to be 4x plus 2 minus 2. So definitely this is going to be 4x plus 2 minus 2 and um, this is plus 2 minus 2 this is giving us 0. So it means this is going to become 4x plus 0. That is plus 0. And this ends up being 4x over 4. This is out. So 4x over 4 the 4s will cancel out and you remain with the value of x being that. So from here you notice one thing. You notice that when we make this a composite function of that in this expression as exhibited here we ended up with our final answer being x. Likewise when we did the second step here which is this and that you found that our final answer was x which is still satisfying this. So if we are to go back to the question, the question is asking that if this function f of x is given by 4x plus 2, then is this function its inverse? From our workings here, the answer is yes. So we will conclude by saying that yes, it's the inverse. If the function f is given, is given by these ordered pairs, now find the inverse of this f, this relation f. So of course the inverse here is going to be this is the value of x, that's why this is the value of x, that's why this is the value of x and that's the value of y. And we say that the other way of finding or of calling if the inverse of a function is more like the reverse of the function. So it means the ordered pairs therefore are going to become this is 1, 2. So the reverse of this is definitely 2, 1. Then this is 2, 3 the reverse of this is 3 comma 2 then this is 3 comma 2 the reverse of this is 2 comma 3 and definitely this is now the inverse of that this is our answer let's say we are having a point 3 comma 1 right there a point 3 comma 1 the inverse of this function is going to be the reverse of this, which will be 1, 3. That is 1, 3. So we're having this point right there and another right here. If I may use another, um, this red point there and there. You realize that these points are on either side of this straight line. So this brings us to the conclusion that the graph of an inverse function is a reflection of the graph about the line y is equal to x. So meaning that if you're having an inverse function this side, I mean if you're having a function this side of the line, the inverse function is a reflection of this function along this line. So it means that it will be reflected in this part of the graph. So the graph we are seeing right there is just another illustration of what I've been talking about. This is the graph of the line y is equal to x. So if we are having this quadratic function, this quadratic function is uh, is to be reflected along that line. Of course, if this quadratic function is reflected along that line, this is the inverse of that quadratic function. And you realize that the inverse of the quadratic function upon reflection in this, along this line is giving us a relation. It's, this is yet another example. This is the line y is equal to x. We are having this function, it's a straight line. And uh, the inverse of this function, like we had said, is a reflection in this, line y is equal to x, so the inverse of this function is this line reflected through y is equal to x. And in this case, the function, the inverse of the function is also a function. Now that we've seen that we can get the reflection of the function or a relation by simply reflecting it in the line y is equal to x, how then can we find the inverse of the function algebraically? So in these few next examples, we are just going to show how we can algebraically or by calculation, we can get the inverse of a function. In our question right here, we are having if the function f where x is the input is given by 5x plus 4, find the inverse of that function f. So finding the inverse of that function f, we get started off by uh, first of all acknowledging this f of x, let's call this f of x y. So it's going to become y is going to be equal to 5x plus 4. So now we want to find the inverse of this function. What we do is that we are going to make x the subject of this formula. When we make x the subject of this formula, 
and then we flip the two. Remember, we said that the, the, the inverse of a function is more like the reverse of a function. So if it's the reverse of the function, it means that x is going to become y and y is going to become x. And that's it. So let's let's start let's start it off this way. So we are going to first make x the subject of the formula. And so this means it's this is going to become uh, we we flip four comes this side, this becomes y minus four is going to be equal five x. So when you divide both sides by five, we end up with our value of x being equal to y minus 4 over 5. So since this is, uh, we are making it, uh, this is the, the, the inverse, is more like we are trying to flip it or find the reverse, it means that we make uh, this value of x becomes back y and this value of y becomes x. So it means in our next step we shall just say that y therefore is going to be equal to x minus 4 over 5. And therefore, we shall say that the inverse of this function, f, the inverse of the function where x is the input, is equal to x minus 4 over 5. So this is how we find the inverse of this function algebraically. This is the same way you would go and plot this on a graph and then you reflect this function in the line y is equal to x. You would still end up with a function of this nature. So we have this one too. We have f of x is going to be equal to x squared. What is the inverse? Again, let's call this y. y is going to be equal to x squared. So our task is to find, make x the subject of the formula. So making x the subject of the formula, we eliminate this square. It becomes the square root of y is going to be equal to x. Therefore, here x is going to be the square root of y. So what we do is that we make x become y, we make x y and y x, we flip them. So it means that y is going to be equal to the square root of x, therefore the inverse is square root of x, like that. We have these multiple choice questions. f of x is given by x, f of x is equal to x. The inverse of f, which is f to the power negative 1, could be represented by one of these. So if the, the, if the f of x is going to be equal to x, if this function f of x is equal to x, let's call this y, meaning that y is going to be equal to x. Of course, um, he already here x is the x is already the subject of this, so meaning that uh, x is going to be equal to y. So if we have to flip those, y will still be equal to x. What does that mean? It means that the inverse of x is still going to be x. And our answer here is a. Another here, the inverse of, of this function f, this function f is in form of... Uh, ordered pairs 1, 2, 2, 3, 3, 4, 4, 1, this and 5, 2, uh, would be a function if the domain of f is limited to, now they're asking us this would be a function if the domain, now by the domain we're talking about the values of x, we have 1 there, we have 2, we have 3, we have 4, and we have 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, now this function, this, uh, let's call this a relation, the inverse of the, the relation f, this would be a function if the domain of f is limited to, and uh, they're giving us these alternatives. Now, first of all, what is the inverse of these ordered pairs? Let's first find the inverse, because the question is talking about the inverse of this. So let's first find the inverse. Of course, the inverse of this is going to be given by... This is 1, 2, the inverse of this point is, or the reverse is 2, 1. Then here it is, this is 2, 3, it means the inverse here is 3, 2. Then this is 3, 4, meaning the, the reverse is 4, 3, or oh, 4, 3. Then here the reverse of this or the inverse is 1, 4. Then the, this is 5, 2, the reverse is 2, 5. 
So now actually the question is talking about the inverse of these ordered pairs. And the inverse of these ordered pairs is this one right here. And they're telling us that this inverse here would be a function if the domain of f is limited to a certain set of numbers. Now let's look at the domain of this inverse. If you look at the domain of this inverse, we have two right there. We have three, we have four, we have one, then we have two again. Now what do we know about an, um, a function? We know that a function is supposed to be one input going to equivalent to one output. One input is corresponding to one exact output. If a certain input is having more than one output, then that is a, it's not a function, it's just a relation. But uh, now let's look at this relation here, the inverse of this thing. We have two, three, four, one, and then two. So you realize that we have two inputs here. We have two comma one, we have two. We have a two here and a two here, but this, the input of two is giving us an output one here and an output five here. So meaning that this is not a function, this ordered pairs is not a function because we're having an input two giving us two different outputs of one and five. So it means that if we are to make this a function, we have to eliminate one of these because the uniqueness of a function or the major characteristic of a function is that one input corresponds to one exact output, not one input having two different outputs. So uh, it means we can either eliminate this or that. So that the question is that what would be, um, this inverse would be a function if the domain, that means if the values of x of f, the values of x, x of this one are limited to this. So if this thing is to be a function, it means that the values of x that are corresponding to these two, one of them has to be eliminated. So it means that we are either going to eliminate this or that. So if you're to come back to this, this 2 comma 1 corresponds to this, and this 2 comma 5 corresponds to that. So it means that if this is to be a function, we have to eliminate f. The domain of f should be limited to, now it either has to be, uh, we either have to eliminate one or we have to eliminate five, one of those two. We eliminate either one or five and if we eliminate this one and maybe then therefore we kill this point, it would mean that the, the, the inverse is a function or we eliminate this. So we'll come here and see which one has been eliminated in our answers. So the domain would be limited to one, three, five. No, that is not it. A is not it. Part B, we have one, which is that two, three, and four. This one, B looks correct. C is one and five. These are the ones we are eliminating. C is not. Part D is one, two, th uh, four, and five. So both are still there. C, D is not it. Then we come to part E is one, two, three, four, and five. But E includes all of them, it's not. The answer here is B, that uh, B is having one, two, three, and four. So meaning that we've eliminated this one. So part B is the answer here. We have these multiple choice questions. In today's session, we get to look at what we call even and odd functions. So we'll start straight away with what an even function is. Now, an even function is one where when you plug in negative x in the place of x, the same function will return. We shall describe, we shall use illustrations to paint the picture clearer regarding this. So let's look at this. We have a function f of x is going to be equal to x squared. Now the input value is here, here is x and it's giving us x squared. So now if in the place of x we put 4, this is going to become 4 squared, that's going to give us 16. When it gives us 16, we go and do the same thing and put a negative 4 in the previous place. When you put a negative of the same function here, it's going to become negative 4 squared and it's still going to give us the same number 16. Now because when we plug in a negative value, it's going to give us the same answer, 16. This makes 
f of x being equal to x squared and even function. This is the other illustration. We are having another function f of x is given by x squared plus 3. Now let's choose a number 5. When x is 5, we put 5 in the input there. Of course, when x is 5, here it's going to become 5 squared plus 3. 5 squared is 25 plus 3 giving us 28. That is when we put in the place of x 5. So now let's go ahead and put negative 5 in that same place. That is what we did here. When x is negative 5, when you put negative 5, it's going to become negative 5 squared plus 3. It's still giving us 25 plus 3, giving us 28. Now, when we plugged in a positive 5, it gave us 28. When we plugged in a negative 5, it still gave us 28. So that property makes this an even function. Again, an even function is one where when you plug in a negative x in the place of x, the same function will return. And that is exactly what we mean. All even functions are symmetric about the y-axis. Now, by saying that they are symmetric about the y-axis, it's like saying the y-axis is like a mirror, or it's a line that divides the function into two equal parts. Let's take a look at a few graphs to illustrate this further. Now, if you look at this graph, this is more of a quadratic graph. This quadratic graph is an even function. Why is it an even function? If you see this quadratic graph, it is symmetric about the y-axis. In other words, the y-axis divides it into two equal parts. So, or, so it is symmetrical about the y-axis. This is what we mean. Now, when it comes to odd functions, and it's a bit different for odd functions, that instead a negative value is going to be returned when we change. Let's take a look. We have the function f of x is given by x to the power 3. So let's make x be equal to 2. When we put 2 in there, when the input value is 2, we are going to get here is 2 to the power 3 giving us 8. So now in the same place, we are going to put negative 2 here. When you put negative 2, negative 2 to the power 3 is going to give us negative 8. So now with, uh, with an odd function, when we put a value of x in the place of value of x, when we put in a negative value in the place of x, like we have done here, you're going to end up coming with a negative answer or a negative function. So that brings us to that relation for old functions, that for an, for odd functions. That for, so that brings us to that relation regarding odd functions. That for odd functions, this is exactly what happens. That when we put a negative answer, actually, this is, is more accurately put when we say that when f, when we put a negative value in there, it's going to return a negative like that. And of course, this negative, if you multiply it on both multiply by negative on both sides, it turns out to be this expression. So that is uh the for odd functions for th this is how the relation comes out about for odd functions that when you put in the place of x you put a negative x you're going to return it's going to return this as your answer now it's important also to note that odd functions have a rotational symmetry about the origin by rotational symmetry it means that if i was to turn this thing uh if this was my center and i was to turn this graph by 80 degrees it would still look exactly in the same it would it would it would have the same shape if i turned it 80 degrees when this is my center it would look the same so that is what we are calling rotational symmetry so they they have a rotational symmetry about the origin now take note there are some functions whereby the the the, the conditions that we've been discussing earlier are not met they, they, they do not meet the condition for it to be an odd or they do not meet the condition for it to be an even function. Now, of course, if you encounter a scenario where neither of those conditions are met, it means that that function is neither odd nor even. But also we talked, we said that our even functions are symmetrical about the x and odd functions are symmetrical about the origin. We are going to go through a series of graphs to try and, and identify which graph is even, is representing an even function, which graph is representing an odd function, and which graph is representing neither of the two.
So the first graph here is a quadratic graph. Of course, this is symmetrical about this axis. It's symmetrical. So this makes it an even function. It's a, it's a function. It's an even function. Then if you look at this thing, it is not symmetrical about the x-axis. And it is also not having any rotational symmetry about the origin. So this one is neither. It is neither odd nor even. Then we have this one right here. It is not symmetrical about the y-axis. In other words, this y-axis is not splitting it into two equal parts. And also, so, so, and also it's not having a rotational symmetry about the origin. So this one is neither. It's neither odd or no even. Looking at this one, this one, if you look at the y-axis, the y-axis splits it into two equal parts, meaning it's having a symmetry about the y-axis so this one is an even function this one right here it's not symmetrical about the y-axis it is not having a rotational symmetry about the x-axis about the origin meaning this one also is neither odd nor even no it's neither odd nor even uh, looking at this graph right here it is having if you look at the y-axis it splits it into two equal parts or into two parts that are identical to each other so it is having uh, it is symmetrical about the y-axis meaning that this represents an even function this one right here is having no rotational symmetry and it is not symmetrical about the y-axis so this one is neither odd nor even this one right here it is uh, it's not symmetrical about the y-axis meaning uh, the y-axis is not is not dividing it into two and also but it's having a rotational symmetry about the origin in other words if you to turn this into 180 degrees it would look exactly the same if you turn this into 180 degrees it would look exactly the same so it means that this is an odd function since it's having a rotational symmetry about the origin if you look at this one it's not having a rotational symmetry about the origin and it is not having a symmetry about the y-axis it's not symmetrical about the y-axis so meaning this one is neither odd nor even then looking at this function, it is symmetrical about the y-axis. In other words, this and that, it's more like a mirror. This is reflected in that direction. So it is symmetrical about the y-axis, so this makes it an even function. Looking at this one, this one is symmetrical about the origin. In other words, if I was to rotate this graph by 180 degrees, it would look exactly the same. So because it is symmetrical about the origin, it is an odd function. This one is not symmetrical. It's neither symmetrical about the y-axis. It's also not symmetrical about the origin. So this one is neither odd nor even. So we have taken note of that. When we want to identify graphs that are representing odd or even functions, the key thing to take note of here is this. That when it comes to odd functions, odd functions are symmetrical about the origin or they have a rotational symmetry about the origin and uh, when it comes to even functions, even functions have uh, uh, even functions are symmetrical about the y axis. So we have some numbers here to work out. We are required to classify each of the following as even or odd or neither. And from there, of course, we are not going to draw graphs. We are going to calculate them and see which ones are even, which ones are odd, and which ones are neither of the two. We shall start with part A. Now, let, let us be reminded, first of all, that when it is for an even function, when uh, for an even function, when we plug in a, uh, a negative here, it's going to return the same function. When it is an odd, when we plug in a negative right there, it is supposed to return something like that. Like we had seen earlier. Uh, le le let's take note of this as we get started. We have our part A here as f 
of x is given, giving us x to the power of 4 minus x squared. So, um, meaning that f of negative x means it's going to give us uh, negative x to the power of 4 minus negative x to the power 2. And of course, negative x to the power 4 is still going to give us x to the power 4 minus negative x to the power 2 is still giving us x. So you realize that when we plugged in a negative, it still gave us this x to the power 4 minus x, which x to the power 4 minus x is f of x. In other words, here, when we plugged in f negative x, it produced this, which is this. It produced f of x. So this means that this is an even function. That is how we arrive to that conclusion that part A is an even function. The function is part B, f of x is 3x squared minus 5x. That's the function. So let's plug in a negative here and we see what we get. So f of negative x is going to give us 3 into negative x squared minus 5 into negative x. So uh, oh, this is to the power 3, it's 3x cubed. So this is to the power 3 right there. So of course here are 3, um, 3 into negative x to the power 3. Negative x to the power 3 is going to give us negative 3x to the power 3 minus 5 times negative x gives us negative 5x like that. And now there, if you're to put this negative outside, it becomes negative um, outside the brackets into 3x cubed minus 5x. And if you notice that this is going to become minus, and what is in the brackets here is 3x cubed, which is 3x cubed minus 5x minus 5x. This is minus f of x. So if you notice that when we plugged in the negative, when we plugged in f of negative x, we ended up with that. So this is a property for odd functions. So it means that this is an odd function. So part C we are having f of x is giving us 2x plus 5. So let's plug in a negative here. A negative... Uh, that is f of negative x is definitely going to give us 2 times negative x plus 5 and then definitely we are going to end up with uh, negative 2x plus 5. Now definitely this um, it does not satisfy any of these conditions. This does not satisfy any of these conditions. It does not satisfy this condition. It does not satisfy this condition. So what that, that means that part C, the function part C is neither odd, it's neither odd nor even. Now we have a function part D. The function D is f of x is equal to 3x squared minus 4x. Let's plug in the negative. f of negative x, what do we get? Does it return the same function? Um, that's going to become 3 into negative x squared minus 4 into negative x. And this is going to become, of course, negative x squared is going to still giving us 3x minus um, negative x. Of course, it's minus negative 4. This is more like 3x plus 4. That is f of negative x giving us that. Now you realize that uh, this and uh, this is squared, that is squared. Of course, this and so you realize that there is no connection between this function and that function in terms of what we call an odd number or an even number or in terms of what we call an odd function and an even function. So what does that mean? It means that this is neither odd neither odd nor even. So what kind of conclusion are we coming up to here? When it comes to odd functions and even functions, this is the conclusion. For even functions, 
when I plug in a negative x, this is the original function. If I plug in a negative x and my working is such that it is going to bring back the original function when I plug in a negative x, it means that that is an even function. That when I plug in a negative x, it brings back the, neg the original function. Likewise, for odd functions, if I plug in a negative, this is the original function. If I plug in a negative right there, and when I plug in a negative in this function and I work it out, and it comes out that it's going to bring a negative of the original function, a negative times the original function, which is this one. It means that, well, that is in this case, that if I plug, I get a negative, when I put in a negative in the original function, it's going to give me negative the original function, then that qualifies to be an odd function. Now, if I work it out, like in these last two numbers, and it so happens to be that neither of these two conditions of the odd function and the even function are met, then that function is neither odd nor even. In this session, we are going to do some three multiple choice questions regarding the topic on odd or even functions. Now, which of the following relations are even? We have Roman 1, Roman 2, and Roman 3. We have y is equal to 2, uh, y is equal to x, and then x squared plus y squared is equal to 1. Which of these relations are even? That's what the question asks us to do. So we shall basically try to identify how these things look like. For example, if you look at y is equal to 2, if, you're to, if I may sketch a graph of y is equal to 2, y is equal to 2 is, uh, maybe this is 1, 2. y is equal to 2 is more like a straight line. This is straight line y is equal to 2. Then this other um, f of x is equal to x, that graph looks like this. Uh, f of x is equal to x or the graph y is equal to x is looks like that this is y is equal to x and then roman 3 x squared plus y squared is equal to 1 this is the equation of a circle um, so it means that it's going to look like that it's equation of a circle and the question is which one of these is even of course i'm using the graphs to try to figure this out we said that an even function is symmetrical about the y-axis. Now, if you look at this, it is symmetrical about the y-axis. So, my meaning that this one is even. If you look at this, it is not symmetrical about the y-axis, but it is symmetrical about the origin. In other words, if I flipped this or rotated it, uh, 180 degrees about the origin it will look exactly the same so it means that this one is an odd function then if you look at this you realize that this circle if i if first of all about it is symmetrical about the y-axis i mean if you look at it it is more like this is a it, it is mirrored this way it is symmetrical about the y-axis and also if i was to rotate this function about the origin i flip it in the um, about the origin like in 180 degrees you'd find that it will still look the same so it means that this function is both odd and even this function so getting back to the question now they're asking us which of the following relations are even of course the ones that are really even we have this one and that one so the answer there is one and three our answer there is D. Then we have another question. They are still with the same. Which of the following relations are odd? We have y is equal to 2, which is this one. We have y is equal to x, which is right there. Then we have x squared plus y squared is equal to 1, which is that circle. Which one of the following relations are odd? The ones that are odd, we have this one and that one. So the answer here is 2 and 3 are odd. So looking through our objective answers, we have...
Okay, which of the following functions is neither odd nor even? Now let's remind ourselves. First of all, for it to be even, it means that when I plug it negative x right there, it's supposed to give me back the original function. And if it is odd, if I plug in negative x there, it's supposed to give me a negative of the original function. The, this is the premise we shall be using. So let's analyze part A. Now when you look at A, we are having um, uh, the, the, the input values here we are having, we have 1, we have 4, negative 1, negative 4, 0. So uh, when we put in 1 here, when the value of x is 1, the value of y is 2. So again, when we come and put it negative 1 in the place of x where there was 1, we put it negative 1, we are still getting back 2. So it means that this is this relation or this function is representing um, an even function. Another thing that proves this is this. Another thing that proves it is this. This is x. When the value of x is 4, we have 7. Now, in the, in, in the place of 4, when we put a negative 4 here, we are still getting back the same value 7 so it means that a is an even function so that won't work let's go to part b if you look at the ordered pairs in b um if you look at uh, for example when we plug in x when x is 1 we get 2 as value of y now instead of putting positive 1 when we put negative 1 in the place of x we are going to end up getting a negative answer in the place of y negative 2 so this satisfies this condition this is an odd function the same can be seen here with 4 when I plug in 4 uh, positive 4 I get positive 7 when I plug in negative 4 I get negative of this negative 7 so this is an odd function so B is also not the answer let's go to C uh, if you look at C, we have y is equal to x to the power 3 minus 1. y is equal to x to the power 3 minus 1. Uh, let's call this f of x. f of x is going to be equal to x to the power 3 minus 1. Now let's plug in a negative x here. So f of negative x, what is it going to give us? f of negative x is going to give us negative x to the power 3 minus 1 and definitely this is going to give us negative x to the power 3 minus 1 as our f of x now this does not um, it's not giving us a, uh, this back it is this is not consistent with this this is also not consistent with this so uh, c is neither odd nor even uh, so I think the C would be the ultimate answer. In this session, we shall simply do a number of worked examples from the topic of functions. Now the examples here, we have number one. We have number two. Then we'll get to number three, number four, and finally number five. You may feel free to first pause the video so that you first attempt the questions and thereafter watch the video to see if you get the correct answers. So let's get straight into it. Number one is telling us that if f of x is equal to 4x minus 8, then part a, what is f of 2? Now if you look at this function, f of x is equal to 4x minus 8, where there is x, when when x if you may look at it this way that x is in the bracket so when we look at this linear function whatever is here is what is substituted here so now if you look at part a part a is saying that what is f of 2 the function where the value of x is 2 now since in the brackets we are having x and this is the function so in the place of x we have 2, it means that even in this function where there is x is where we are going to put 2 and then we'll be able to get the answer to this expression. So in this case this is going to become 4 times x, so the value of x is 2, 4 into 2 minus 8 and that's going to become 4 times 2 is 8 minus 8 
and that is going to give us 0. That is part A. Let's get to part B. Part B is what is f of 3? We are going to do it like before. f of 3 means that it's going to become our function is 4 times our value of x. Now in this case our value of x there is 3 in the brackets minus 8. And this is going to become 4 times 3 is 12 minus 8 and our answer right there is 4. Let's go to part C. Part C is what is the function where the value of x is mouse. So it means where there is x, we are simply going to put that word mouse. So part C is f of mouse is going to be equal to 4 into brackets. Now where there was x, in here there is mouse. So we shall put here the word mouse minus 8. Mathematically, we can't go beyond this, so that's the answer. Part D, if f of x is 16, what is the value of x? So now, still, our f of x is equal to 16. So what is the value of x in this case? Now, of course, f of x is equal to 16. Our f of x, according to our question, f of x is given by 4x minus 8. So our f of x can is the same as 4x minus 8. That is going to be equal to 16. So you can go ahead and find the value of x. In this case, it's going to become 4x is going to be equal to 8 comes this side. It becomes 16 plus 8. So we have 4x giving us 24. When we divide both sides by 4, we end up with our value of x as 6. And that's our answer. Part E, we are being told that if uh, the function whereby the value of x is 2b is going to be equal to 28, what is the value of b? So we go ahead and find the value of b. Now remember our function up here is f of x is equal to 4x minus 8. It means that whatever is in the brackets is what is supposed to be put here. Now right here what is in the brackets our value of x is 2b. So it means that in the place of x here we are going to put 2b. So this is going to become 4 times in the place of brackets we put 2b minus 8. That's going to give us 28. So we open brackets here 4 times 2 is 8b minus 8 is equal to 28. And so this, our 8b becomes 28 plus 8. 8b is equal to 36. When I divide both sides by 8, I shall end up with my value of b as 4.5. Now part f. Part f is telling us that f of c plus the function of where the value of x is 2c is equal to 8, find the value of c. So we go ahead and find the value of c now. Of course, from our original function, the original function is f of x is equal to 4x minus 8. Looking at this function, where the x, where there is x is, is what we put here. If there is 2 here, we put 2 here. If there is 3 here, we put 3 here. Because the function when the value of x is the, the function of this variable is given by that function. Now here, when you look at this, this statement, in our brackets we are having the value of x being given as c. So it means that according to this expression, this is the same as saying f of c, our value of x is c. So now when we put c right there, it means that this 4x, this is also going to become a c. So that is how we do our next step. We substitute, so this is going to become 4x, I mean 4c, 4c minus 8, plus again, here this is f of x, our value of x is 2c, so in the place of x here we shall put 2c, this was an interpretation for f of c, plus now this one is going to become 4 times x, our value of x is 2c minus 8 is equal to 8. 
So we'll go ahead, simplify this expression and find the value of c. So this is going to become 4c minus 8 plus 8c minus 8 is going to give us 8. So this becomes 4c plus 8c, 12c, then minus 8, minus 8 gives us minus 16, is going to give us 8. So we have 12c being equal to 8 plus 16, that is after 16 coming this way. And it becomes a positive after crossing the equal signs. So this becomes 12c is giving us 24, divide both sides by 12. We shall end up with a value of c as 2. So doing part g, part g is going to become, remember our initial function, we say that f of x is going to be is given by 4x minus 8. And we also say that where there is x, we substitute in that expression. So whatever is put in these brackets here, is what is representing what we put here in the expression. So in this case, we're being told that f of 3d minus 7 is equal to 12. Now, in the brackets we have in this whole expression, it means that this whole expression is what is taking up this value of x. This value of x is a linear equation, and so that is what we are going to substitute for in this expression right here. So this becomes uh, 4x, 4 times our value of x, which is this whole expression, which is 3d minus 7 minus 8. Minus 8 is equal to 12. So we go ahead and open brackets and find the value of d. So this becomes 12d minus 28 minus 8, giving us 12. So this is going to become 12d minus 36, giving us 12. 12d is going to become, this 36 comes this side, it's a negative 36, crosses the equal signs, comes this way, it becomes positive, 12 plus 36, and then we end up with our value of 12d giving us 48. When we divide both sides by 12, we end up with our value of d as 4. Now in our number 2, we are having a table. A table that is giving us values of x and then the the values of f of x now. now the values of f of x in this case are 1 3 5 7 9 and 11 it means that when we plug in these values of x in this function we are able to get these as our answers these are the values of f of x or if i may say if this is the value of x this is the corresponding value of y now looking at this, we are being told that for the function in the table besides, what is the function where the value of x is 3? Now in this case, the value of x in that case, in that bracket, is 3. So we shall come to the value of x and look for 3. 3 is right there. So it means the function f of x, the value of y, or the value of this function is 5. So for part A, the answer is 5. If I may go to part B, if f of a is equal to 7, what is a? Now we are being told that the function when the value of x is a, the answer we get is 7. So now if the function when the value of x is a is 7, then what is a? Now for us to get to the value of a, it means we need to go and find where the whole function, the value is 7. And if you come to our table, where a7 is right there. I mean where f of x is 7 is right there and this value of a has been replaced by x like our value of x is actually a so f of a is 7 so when f of a is 7 it means the value of a here is 4 so it means that this value of a here is 4 so when the value of a is 4 or in the value of a or in this case when the value of x is 4 the function is equal to 7. Now let's go to part C. We are being told that if f of 2 or when the value of x is 2, the function is equivalent to b. What is the function of 2b? So it means we need to first find b. Now to find the function f when f of 2 is equal to b, so to first get the value of b, it means we've, we've been told that 
the, it is b when the value of x here is 2 so we come to our table when the value of x is 2 f of x is going to be 3 so it means that if this is the our value of x here is 2 f of x is 2 so the function here is equal to 3 so it means that f of 2 is uh, 3 therefore our value of b is 3 now that we know that our value of b is 3 now we can go ahead and find f of 2b so it means that in this case it's going to become f of 2b is giving you f of 2 times our value of b which is 3 in this case it's going to be f of 6 so what is our f of 6 what is the function when the value of x is 6 so we can go ahead and find that what's our function when our value of x is 6 the value is 11 so it means that this is going to be so our f of 2b is 11 and that's how that number is number 2 ends like that now if g of x is equal to x squared then we need to answer part a b and c with reference to this expression with reference to this function we are being told that the function of g when is equal to g of x the function on g where x is a variable is given by x squared so now what is the function of g when the variable is negative 2 so first of all we know that the function g of x is equal to x squared the function g when x is the variable is given by x squared so what is g when the variable is negative 2 therefore this is part a so g when the variable is negative 2 like we are seeing here is going to mean that where the, the variable is we substitute here it becomes negative 2 squared and this is going to become negative 2 times negative 2 and gives us positive 4 so we go ahead and find part b part b tells us that if g the function g when the, with a variable m is equal to 36 find the value of m remember all this is in reference to that expression so it means that our variable has become m in this case where there is x we have put m our variable has become m in other words the value of x now is m and they're telling us that when we come and put m right there our value the value of this expression of the function is 36 so it means in this expression g of x our value of x has become m it means that if there is m here it means that this is the same as seeing m squared right there so this becomes m squared is the same as 36 to 1 go ahead and find the value of m we find the square root on both sides this goes with that m becomes this square root of 36 is either a positive 6 or a negative 6 so the value of m the values of m are actually 2 that is our part b again now g the value variable g where the value of x in this case now has become w is equal to 12 find the find g of 2 w so g w is equal to 12 so first of all we seek to find the value of w so it means that if g is equal to uh, it, originally the the variable was x and when the variable of x it gives us x squared so now if the variable is w right there it means that this is supposed to be also w squared we just substitute so it means that this becomes w squared here is given by 12 so for us to go ahead and get the value of w we find the square root on both sides so that this goes with that you remain with w giving us the square root of 12 now we have the value of w but the question requires us to find the variable the g of 2w so we go ahead and substitute that right there so what is g of 2w now g of 2w is going to become um, of course g of 2w remember from our initial uh, expression it is g of x is equal to x squared what is in the brackets here is what takes up the place of x in the expression so here what is in the brackets here is 2w so that is exactly what is going to take up the place of x in this expression which is going to become 2w 
squared. So this is going to become um, 2 times w. Now we've got w as the square root of 12 times the square root of 12. And all this is squared. So we can go ahead and find our answer. This squared, of course, this is becomes it's going to become um, 2 root of 12 times 2 root of 12. So this is going to become 2 times 2 is 4 times, of course, a square root. In a square root of a number times the square root of a number gives you that very number. So this is going to remain times 12. And of course, 12 times 4 times 12 gives us 48. And that is our answer. So going on to number 4, we have delta x is given by 1 minus 3x. So if delta x is given by 1 minus 3x, what is delta 2? So here in essence they are saying that what is delta 2, in the place of x there is 2. So what is going to be this expression? So if I may rewrite the solution here, delta x is, going to, is given by 1 minus 3x. So meaning that delta 2 is... 1 minus 3 in where there is x is 2 so meaning that here is the value of x is 2 so this becomes 1 minus 3 times 2 which is 6 and our answer is negative 5 now we have part b if delta a is equal to 4 then what is a so delta a, first of all, we start from this expression. Delta x, which is our question, is given by 1 minus 3x. And we are being told that delta a is equal to 4. It means that when the value of x is taken up by 4, um, uh, if the value of x is taken up by a, we get an expression as 4. So if this is our expression from the question, we are being told here that delta a is equal to 4. So delta A, it means that this has been taken up here. This is our A. See, so that when our value of X is A, it means that this whole expression, this value of X also is now A. So if we may write the next step for in that, in that regard, it's going to become 1 minus 3A is going to give us 4. So this becomes minus 3A giving us 4 minus 1. And our value of A here is 1. So let's go on to part C. We're being told that what is delta 3 over delta 1? Delta 3 over delta 1. That's going to become now delta 3. From here, our value of x in this case has become 3. So we substitute for 3 here. And this becomes 1 minus 3. Our value of x is 3. So this is 3 times 3. 3 times 3. Divide all that by delta 1 it means it's becoming 1 minus 3 times 1 like that so we go ahead and find the expression here this is going to become 1 minus 3 times 3 is 9 divide that by 1 minus 3 and this is going to become negative 8 divide that by negative 2 and definitely our answer here is positive 4 so in our number 5 which is probably the which is definitely the final number in this session. We are having um, a graph of f of x right here. And we have a few questions to answer about this in reference to this graph. We are being told that for the function graphed, we are being told that for the function graphed above, like you're seeing, what is f of 1.5? Now, if you look at our graph, this is... Um, they are asking us that what is the value of this function when the value of x here is 1.5. So, of course, this is our value of it. This is our x-axis, and this right here is our y-axis. So now when they say f of x when x is um, 1.5, what is this whole function? It's like they are saying what is the value of y when x is 1.5. So we come here and look for where 1.5 is. Definitely 1.5 is right there. And if you look at 1.5 here, it's corresponding to a value of y as 2. So meaning that uh, the f, the function, when the variable x is 
f of 1.5 is equal to 2 or it's the same as saying um, the value of y is 2 when x is 1.5 so that's part a part b we are being told that if c is greater than 0 and f of c is equal to 1 what is c so now what is c so what is c when this whole the value of the function is equal to 1 or in other words they are saying that when the value of y is 1 what is the value of x because in the brackets here is the variable and our value of x in this case is c so we look for f of c or the value of y when it is 1 when our value of y is 1 if i may come here in this our value of y is 1 or our f of c is 1 is this line this is the line where it is 1 so when our value of y is 1, there are two possible values of x. We have this value right here. We have this value right there. That is according to this graph. According to this graph, when our value of y is 1 or when our value of f of x is 1, the two possible values of x is this and that. But then the question is saying that if c is greater than 0 and f of c is equal to 1, what is c? Now we got this and we've, we have there are two possible values. And uh, of course, the value here is negative a half, comma one, and then this one right here is two point five two two and a half, comma one. Now, since the question is saying that the R value of C is supposed to be greater than 0, R value of X here is supposed to be greater than 0, if you look here, the value of X here is less than 0. So it means that the value of X they're talking about is this one, which is 2.5 or 2.5. So the value of C here is 2.5. So let's look at part C. For how many values of X is F of X is equal to 3 over 2? So how many values of x do we have when the f of x or when the value of y is 3 over 2? If I may simplify it that like, like that. So how many values of x exist when the value of y is 3 over 2? So 3 over 2 is the same as 1.5. So we shall go and look for the value of f of x is equal to 1.5 or call it the value of y to be 1.5. And we see how many values of x are there. So we shall come here and look. Our value of y to y is equal to 1.5 is right there. 1.5. This is the value. 1.5. This is the line. Y is equal to 1.5. Or call it f of x is equal to 1.5. This is the line. So how many values of x are there? Of course, if you look at this function, this line crosses this at that point at the, this graph at that point and it also crosses it at that other point so what does that mean it means that when our value of y is 1.5 there are two possible values of x this value and that value so the answer to this question for how many values of x are of x is f of x is equal to 3 over 2 the values are 2 and that brings us to the end of this This brings us to the end of this video. Thanks for watching. Feel free to check out other excellent videos on the channel and don't forget to subscribe. For Kisembo Academy, this is Anwar Rangakuramia helping you manifest excellence.